It's called Human Growth Hormone, HGH, and it's the potent compound produced in the pea-sized pituitary gland at the base of your brain. You need HGH to grow into adulthood, but it is also essential to keep your organs healthy, your muscles strong, and your energy up. Some doctors see it as the key to finding the fountain of youth. But ironically, as you age, your natural production of HGH actually drops. So researchers developed a synthetic version to stave off the aging process. But now, there's a new frontier, stimulating your body's production of growth hormones naturally with amino acids. A recent study showed patients given a special blend of amino acids saw their HGH levels spike more than six times the levels they had at the beginning of the study. According to the researchers, the result was faster metabolism and an increase in endurance. So are amino acids the secret to boost your HGH, renew your energy, and recharge your body? We've done shows on HGH. Mm -hmm. It's controversial. Mm -hmm. um, I know a lot of folks in Hollywood use it. Mm -hmm. That always makes me a little wary, I gotta say, when a lot of like, you know, stars are using it and stuff. Why do you say HGH? What has it done for you? Well, I, I do my research. I don't just, because the doctor says, here, why don't you have this? The hormone system is, is like a symphony. And you can, you can um, put on the symphony if a lot of the players don't show up. It sounds better with the French horns, and it sounds better with the string section. Uh, if you don't have Zubin Mehta showing up, it's all kind of discordant, so that would be your thyroid, adrenal, cortisol. So HGH is like the KISS. HGH is um, uh, expensive, uh, and it's determined by lab work if you have a deficiency. It builds bone, it builds muscle, it um, is, um, uh, strengthens the heart, the pumping power of the heart. Uh, once I started adding HGH to the concoction, I don't know, I, I don't have trouble with my weight, I, I sleep eight hours a night, everything is working as though my body was at its healthiest optimal prime. Now, athletes overuse it. Athletes use, in many cases, a hundred times more than physiologic doses. I use only what my lab work shows as my deficiency. And the lab work that you do is to determine your IGF-1, which, which is insulin growth factor 1. That's the only way you can determine it. And um, at different times of the day, it will be different. But my uh, needs are a 0 .08, not even 1. How long have you been taking HGH for? I went to see Dr. Rice uh, when I was 48, so uh, 12 years. 12 years. Mm -hmm. So you, when I'm going to be turning 60. Oh, God, I'm saying this on national TV. Oh, my <laughs> God. Uh, I'm going to be turning 60 this summer, June. You are going to be turning 60. And you I do haven't not, done this yet either. You haven't had a, any uh, facelift or anything. Mm -hmm. You guys could be <laughs> sisters. This is your daughter. No. She's 20. How old are you? She's 23. 23. Mm -hmm. um, why did you want to do HGH? Well, I didn't go in to see Dr. Rice to do HGH. I went in when I was 48 because I was going through perimenopause. I was, I've always kind of thought out of the box and um, it just didn't seem right to me to take hormones going to the gynecologist. They just wanted to put you on Prever Prevarin and, and uh, HRT, you know, mm -hmm. hormone replacement therapy. And I was just always against it. I've always been very natural which I think is funny now that I'm involved in this little controversy because to me this is more natural. Um, because it's something that the body makes. It's your body makes it. And so I went to see him because I was having perimenopausal symptoms, uh, foggy thinking, my vitality didn't seem the same, uh, my drive, you know, ambition, everything was calming down a bit. And, and since being on it, what do you... It was like a light switch. I mean, I felt it instantly. I mean. He didn't put me on. At first, I went to him. He checked all my hormones very carefully. It was uh, kind of unusual that I had so little of the human growth hormone. He made a comment to me about it. In Hollywood, it's all about image. When people come to you, what are they looking for? Well, they come for generally two reasons. They want to feel better and they want to look better. Older Hollywood has its own ideas. Suzanne Sommers says HGH helped her make 60 the new 40. 
Sylvester Stallone at 61 defends HGH as a way to reduce physical wear and tear. David Mattingly, CNN, Los Angeles. Please welcome also the right hand, Dr. Jeffy Lack to the show. Good to have you. Yes. Good welcome. to be here. Thank you. Thank you all very much. You Looking are in really amazing good there. shape, Thank yes. Thank you. And, and how old are you again? I'm 73, coming up on 74. Oh. And he's, and he's showing it all yeah. off. What in your life made you change your, your lifestyles, your patterns, obviously the things that you weren't doing right? Well, when I was in my late 50s, I, well, you saw how I looked. And I was short of breath, climbing steps. I was a horrible example for my patients. My sexual function was crashing. And I just knew I had to make some changes. And I uh, entered the Body for Life contest, and that's what got me going. The neat thing is that uh, over the years, the better I get looking, the healthier I am. I mean, it's a win-win. Very few things in life are a win-win. Mm -hmm. But this is how it's worked out. And it can work out for everybody. Is your program also include the hormone replacements and testosterone and things like that? Because to me, you know, that's pretty controversial. And I'm just curious, you know, how you look at it. Yeah, absolutely. It's important that you do not let your hormones decline. Mm -hmm. if, if you have... If you're deficient in hormones, you need to get that corrected. Um, it's a losing battle if you, uh, as you age, if your hormones keep going down. You need to fix that. I think it's so important, you know, touching on that, the hormonal aspect, that, that anybody, you know, considering making changes like this, you have to do it under the supervision of a doctor Absolutely. who, who, who a, understands. Under a physician that knows how to do all this. So the, I guess the one thing is a lot of people will say, well, how do you, you know, how do you achieve a body like you have at age 73? And, and you do mention supplementing with testosterone. And the controversy, I guess, in medical circles is how high do you go? How much do you replace? Because, again, a lot of men are going to look at your physique and say, oh, my gosh, yeah. I could never look like that. And the truth is they couldn't without supplementing. So how do you, you know, where do you draw that line? Well, uh, my goal for my, myself and my patients is to get testosterone levels at where a, 40, a healthy 40-year-old would be. And, that's, and, and so it needs to be monitored every three or four months to make sure that it's right in that range. So I think what you're saying is high, normal, By not getting beyond that. testosterone levels up to a healthy level, it not only makes you look better and feel better, but you're much healthier and you're much less risk for disease. Well, and an important takeaway point there is if, if you are a male and all of a sudden you're suffering from unexplained fatigue, you have no sex drive anymore, you should get your testosterone levels checked and then certainly uh, discuss with your doctor where your levels should be. Um, and your book is called The Life Plan. And, and by the way, I'm giving a copy to everyone here. Hey, all right. Thanks for joining.